Hey, well, hello everyone. Um, this is our final cooking class because we're ending with the Thai green curry spice blend. And we're, so I'm Kelsey, obviously, with Not Mommy's Cooking, and we're doing the spice blend with Masi Masa. Um, and tonight we're making a Thai green curry stir fry with coconut rice. Um, this is a stir fry that's, I know lots, I do a stir fry pretty often uh, as a weekday meal or even a weekend meal or even like a quick lunch. Um, and the addition of the spice blend just adds a different dimension to it. Tonight, uh, we're going to talk about cooking vegetables at different times and how to make a good stir fry where all the vegetables are cooked equally um, and you don't have soggy vegetables and you have crisp vegetables or um, too much water. And then we'll be making some nice fluffy coconut rice. Um, of course, if you have any questions about substitutions or um, questions about certain ingredients or things you'd like to add, feel free to raise your hand or just unmute and uh, ask your question. We're a good size group. And so this is the size I like because then we can interact a little bit and um, make sure everyone's questions get asked. So I know in the... Yes, Patrice. Um, if I, I'll be manning the chat. Hi guys, I'm helping with tech today. I'll be manning the chat. So if you have a question and you don't feel like butting in, um, you can just send a, a question in the chat too. And I have no problem butting in, so. Thanks Patrice. Yeah. Um, so tonight, I know the recipe, we talked about a choice of protein. So I, I tonight I'm gonna do tofu. So I'm gonna sear some tofu, but I'm gonna talk to people if you have meat options, whether that's a chicken breast or chicken thigh, even a pork loin, or if someone went fancy and got a steak, then we can talk about cutting meat. Um, but we're going to, sorry about my ice maker. <laughs> I'm just gonna make some ice right now. Um, also in the recipe, it talked about um, crispy scallop, scallops, shallots. And crispy shallots are just a garnish. I'm gonna go ahead and cook them through. And it's a quick garnish that takes about five minutes. Um, it was included in the recipe. And we're gonna start off with that. Of course, if you don't want that as a garnish or don't have that, then that's completely fine. And this can be saved for next time. So I have, we're gonna start with the crispy shallots because those take really little time. And then we'll go into the rice because the rice needs to, get, needs to start cooking. And then we'll, as the rice cooks, chop our vegetables and cook our vegetables. How does that feel for everyone? Feel good? I see head nods. We're ready. Okay, so I have my, I'm just going to put, so I have about a cup or so of oil in a small saucepan, and this is for my fried shallots. And then I cut my shallots, I cut about two shallots into about two milliliter, millimeters, milliliters, millimeters thick. Um, the thing with the crispy shallots, you want them not super thin because then they'll burn as quickly as you cook them because you want them to be nice and crisp rather than burnt because once a burnt shallot is burnt or once a shallot is burnt it's really bitter and not yummy tasting at all so there's this perfect balance so we want evenly cut shallots nicely thin and they're all the same size um i chop them right through there i cut about two shallots and then about a cup of oil in my saucepan over medium high heat and I'm just gonna watch that. And I know, let's see, if I can see a raise of hands of who is making shallots. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Oh, we got a lot of shallots. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're gonna, I'm watching my oil right now. The oil's gonna take a little bit of time to heat up. So as people are shopping shallots, would we be all right to get our rice started? Can we multitask a tiny bit? The rice is pretty simple. So I have, a in the recipe, it, it's the servings are for four to five people. And so the servings for the rice is two cups. So if you're making a big, or if you're feeding four people, follow the recipe, it's two cups of rice for three cups of water and a half cup of coconut milk. If you're cooking smaller tonight, just one or two people, I'm gonna be cooking for just myself and Ricky. So we're going to go with one cup of rice. So I have one cup of jasmine rice rinsed. So we want to make sure our rice is rinsed and gets the starch off. Because we're adding the coconut pre or coconut milk 
it has that really creaminess. And so the more starch and cream would just be nice and thick coconut rice. And so we, I would want fluffy coconut rice. <laughs> so we're gonna have one sort of heavy, heavy player in there, which will be the coconut milk. So I have my rinsed rice, one cup of jasmine rice. Of course, if you don't have jasmine rice, I would say that your next best bet would either be like basmati because it's nice and floral. Um, you can use like a Japanese rice, um, a short grain rice, or even a medium grain rice. Um, it just, I'd really make sure to rinse it well. Um, the Japanese rice is a little, little bit more, it's a little bit more glutinous, and so it might not be as fluffy as jasmine rice, um, but is a good substitute as well. You can also use rice noodles. A stir fry can go on top of noodles. If you are a noodle person than a rice person, that's totally fine. You're gonna be eating this dish, so I would hope that you would enjoy it. So I have my cup of rice rinsed. I'm going to add, if, because I'm doing just a cup, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about two cups. Two cups of rice, we're gonna add three cups of water. You're doing a cup of rice, you're gonna add a cup and a fourth of water. If you're doing two cups of rice, you're gonna add a half cup of coconut milk. And then if you're just one cup, it can be about a fourth of a cup. We're just gonna give that just a quick stir. To make sure the coconut milk is throughout the water and the rice. And then I'm gonna turn that onto a medium high heat and wait for that to start boiling. So not super high, because once it boils too quick, the rice doesn't cook evenly. So we want it over like a medium high heat so it can start to boil over a gradual temperature. So I can, I feel my oil, or I'm putting my hand over my oil. Should we add the coconut milk? Oh, Patrice, could you? Read me that question really quick. Uh, should we add the coconut milk now if we're using a rice maker? Yes. So even if you're using a rice cooker, same amount of liquid um, popping, you're smart because you're using a rice cooker and all you need to do is press a button. <laughs> so yes, you can go ahead and add the coconut milk to it now. For this, us cooking on the stove, once it boils, we will turn the temperature down to low, put a lid on, and then let it cook for about 18 minutes, which should be about the time that the rice cooker should have on it as well. So back to the oil for our shallots. So whenever frying, um, a trick that I've been taught, I don't know if a lot of people find other ways to see if your oil is hot enough, is by using a chopstick. Um, so I usually use a wooden chopstick and put it at the bottom of my pot. And once I see bubbles starting at the bottom of my chopstick, um, then I know my oil's nice and ready. Like the boils are coming at a consistent little gurgle. They're not coming up, so it is not ready at all. So I'm just gonna wait and keep my shallots to the side as I wait for my oil. The shallots really are only gonna be in there for about three to four minutes. If your oil is warm, I would say you're starting to see it maybe twirl a little bit, you could put a wooden spoon. Yes, Patrice. Uh, are the amounts the same if you're using basmati rice? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, amounts are same. If your oil is hot enough, I'm gonna turn mine up just a tad because I want it hot. We're gonna add the shallots in and then through the shallots, we're gonna be stirring them continuously, starting to break up the shallots in the oil and then cooking them through. I can feel that it's almost ready. For now, I'm gonna start getting my vegetables ready. I can tell that my oil is just about ready, but I'm gonna start getting a little bit ahead. If you have already started prepping your vegetables or if you have a great sous chef, then I would start prepping your vegetables now. Um, in a stir fry, the great thing about stir fry is that it is user friendly and you, use, <laughs> you can put pepper, zucchini, it can change with seasons. So any vegetable that is ready, um, would be a great option. Tonight I have zucchini, carrots, broccoli, a broccoli cauliflower blend, um, and a yellow onion. You could easily add in 
if it was springtime and we have asparagus, you could add in some asparagus or eggplant. Um, you could add in kohlrabi, cauliflower, celery. It's really a lovely, lovely thing about stir fries is that you can really throw in anything to it. Um, and as long as you have good seasoning and good cooking technique, it's, you're gonna great, come up with a great stir fry and you can impress people very easily with lots of vegetables. <laughs> so I can feel, so I'm gonna chop about half of my bell pepper and take out the seeds. And I'm going, I, if you've taken classes with me or we talk a lot about making sure that what you're, the vegetables you're cutting are around the same size. So when you do cook them together and you're eating them, um, there's just a good mouth feel. They cook up more evenly and you're not worrying about, um, again, that soft, like squishy vegetables compared to crisp vegetables that aren't fully cooked yet. Kelsey, quick question. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's about one cup of oil for the shallots, right? Yes, one cup of oil. I'm gonna tilt my camera down. Lovely. One cup of oil. It's about, my. I have a small sauce pot and it's about an inch. Yeah, about, if you want to get really technical, maybe like three fourths of an inch of oil. <laughs> but it's just about an inch of oil, just enough to where when we're adding in the shallots, they're not going to be sticking to the bottom of the pan. Um, if you're being pretty oil conscious, then I would, it's probably about three, about a cup of oil. <laughs> That's being oil conscious. And as I put in my chopstick, I can see little bubbles starting to come up from the bottom of it. So I'm going to add in my shallots and they're all thinly sliced. And so as you see, they're starting to bubble. And so I'm just going to quickly stir it. And then we're going to stir it. Oh, I'm, the great thing about this shallot oil, all the moisture coming from the shallot, you get a great shallot facial. But no, it's these <laughs> crispy shallots can, you can put them on anything. You could put them on scrambled eggs. You could put it in a breakfast burrito. You could put it on a taco, any sort of like stir fried noodles or soups. Um, I keep them aside for my ramen. If you're making like a quick bowl of ramen, it's not just the shallots that you can keep nice and crisp, um, but the oil. So this oil that is cooking um, the shallots is a great oil to keep on hand for dressings like salad dressings. Um, you could use it for marinades or even as a finishing oil on top of your ramen. So it's like beautifully shallotty, oniony um, oil that you should not waste. So, you know, if we're cooking shallots, a good oil would always be a good vegetable oil, a high cooking the oil with a high temperature point, um, avocado oil, sunflower oil. And as I can see, they're just kind of breaking up. I'm gonna let those cook for just a tad as I finish chopping my bell pepper. I'm gonna chop mine in cubes. So I'm thinking about an inch by inch cubes along my bell pepper. If you cut it into little strips, don't worry about it, it's fine. And I'm gonna put it in my vegetable bowl so it's ready for me. I'm gonna cut a little bit more bell pepper. I'm just keeping an eye on my shallots. The thing with the shallots is you do want to watch them and kind of give them a good stir every now and then. Because once they get to the point between golden and burnt is that line is very fine and very small. So we're just, I'm just watching them. They're nice and bubbly. You shouldn't see too big of bubbles, but you definitely see those shallots bubbling away. So now I'm gonna to go to my zucchini. I'm just gonna cut for myself about half of the zucchini. Um, I'm gonna cut it in half moons, which are about half an inch, not half an inch. They're about a quarter of an inch. You don't want them too thick because zucchini can take a minute to cook. So I would say they're about this thick. Not too thin, not too thick, little half moon. If you want, of course, you could always get fancy. You can make little stars. Um, you could make all sorts of little things or shapes if you'd like. 
but we don't got time for that because we're hungry and we're going to eat. <laughs> um, again, just going to check on my shallots. They're still cooking away. Now I have my carrot. So I have one large carrot and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it at a diagonal and cut little slits of it. So about the same width as our half moons, but instead I'm going to be cutting it at a 45 degree angle, cutting it down. If you're right handed, you're going to be cutting it down at a 45 degree angle with the tip pointed towards your right. So I'm just going to be cutting diagonally little rounds. Let's see if you can see that nice and well. <clears throat> <laughs> if our shallots are looking like they're done, uh, should we and take them I, out of oil? Yeah, take them out of the oil with a fine mesh strainer um, and then set them on a plate with uh, a Chip paper. Out. I can tell mine are just already, you can tell they're ready when they're just only golden. Mine, I can still tell they're still cooking, but right on the edges, they're starting to get golden and crisp. So mine probably have about two minutes left, if that. I can tell this is a point where I'm going to chop vegetables and also look and watch the oil. Okay, so I have my carrot chopped. I'm gonna keep my carrot and broccoli in the same area because they're gonna be cooking first. So those two vegetables are a little bit starchier they have a higher fiber content, so they just need a little bit more time for those fibers to break down, other than bell pepper and zucchini and onion. So I'm just going to keep them together and keep them happy. We don't want to break up the couple. And I made them a couple as a couple. Seems like someone, I think Michelle got the body chopper knife from last class. Oh, very nice. And I can see that my shallots, I can tell they're turning from a gold, from a tan now to a dark, not dark, but a nice golden brown. And I'm gonna take them out of the oil in about 10 seconds. I'm gonna let, light, lay them on my paper towel lined. There we are, these are done. And they will, they may not look crispy, but they will get nice and crisp once they are out of the oil. And if you have put your rice on a burner, make sure if it has started to boil. I'm going to set that oil aside and save it because we know that that's good oil to keep. And we have beautifully crispy little onions that will crisp. Lovely. I mean, you think about like, that's the oil that you can, or not the oil, the shallots, or the crispy onions, you know, and like green bean casserole. You can make them yourself and they're delicious. And they're so good. And you want my rice to boil. But anyways, so my shallots are done. I chopped up my veg, my carrot, my broccoli is just about chopped up. I'm just gonna cut it into a smaller chunks. I have about, it's about one head of broccoli. You could combine it with cauliflower if you'd like. See, we have a question about rice that has started to boil. Turn it or yes. turn heat off. So if your rice has started to boil, you're gonna turn it down to low. So either a two or low. Um, you still want a flame on and you're gonna put the lid on, making sure that there's a tiny little, if your pot has a, like an, a little open lid, like I know some lids have like an, an air release, um, you can add, if it doesn't, you can just tilt your lid a little bit, just a tad, just a tiny bit. And then you're gonna put your lid on and you're gonna set your timer for 18 minutes once your rice has boiled. Now for myself, I'm going to chop my onion. And I'm just gonna cut it into about the same length as the zucchini on the same width. Again, I'm only, I'm doing about half of an, half of a small onion <clears throat> or about a fourth of a, of a large onion. So now my vegetables, I have my carrots, 
onions are in this little pocket, my broccoli and cauliflower, and then I have my zucchini and my peppers ready. So those are chopped. Next, I'm gonna chop my ginger, garlic, and chili. So the chili was optional if you'd like to make it nice and spicy. It, I'm using a serrano chili. You could also use a Thai green chili. Um, you can use a dried red chili, like a, ja a chili japonese, um, a Japanese chili pepper that you can add while we're stir frying if you like heat. So I'm just gonna <coughs> chop, give a quick smash to our garlic cloves because smashing our garlic cloves brings out all the goodness of garlic and allows us to chop it a lot easier. I've learned, um, did I put it away? Where did I think I did put it away? I have this um, garlic grater, but the thing is I wish there was like a garlic holder. What size was the zucchini? We have it in about three milliliter, mill, gosh, I cannot say milliliter, millimeter half moons. So I have a little half moon. It's about that thick. We don't want them super thick because um, they won't be cooking too much time. Oh my goodness. You want to know why my rice cooker, my rice wasn't cooking? It's because I turned on the wrong burner. I was like, why does it feel so hot? And that is why, because I turned on the wrong. <laughs> that makes me feel better that even sometimes you make mistakes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're going to keep on going with it, even though it was totally heating up my walk. <laughs> my walk is really hot now. <laughs> but we're going to play with it. We're going to go with it because we're still chopping our garlic and we we're talking about garlic and how great garlic is. So we're going to chop our garlic. There's about three cloves of garlic or so. Give it a quick chop, um, smashing it like what I was mentioning makes it a lot easier to chop it. Give it a quick chop down and also releases all the great things about garlic. And if you ask me specifically right now at the moment, I wouldn't be able to tell you because that's slipping from my mind, but I know it gives you really great things when you smash it. The garlic, smash it out. All right, my garlic chopped really quick. I'm going to, you can either grate or mince about an inch of ginger, a fresh ginger. Um, I'm going to give mine a really quick chop. And how I like to chop my ginger is I first like to cut it into really thin slices and kind of make little bamboo, not bamboo, but make little sticks, ginger sticks. So I cut them in slices like this of my inch of ginger. And I kind of line those up and cut little slivers of them. So they're all, let's see if I can show you now, now a little sliver. Question and then from the Thai chili, sorry to interrupt. Yes, um, of course. Is the Thai chili supposed to be small? And I think that means it's supposed to be chopped small. No, uh, like look how tiny this is. Let's see. Sorry. Oh, so with chilies, even though small but mighty, <laughs> still a thing oh, with no. Um, So with a Thai green chili, how I like with any chili, any chili really, uh, that's probably down to a Thai green chili because I probably wouldn't do this with any other, any chili spicier than this, um, is how you test if it's, even though it's small, to test the spiciness, you can either pop the lid off, the, lid, <laughs> the little cap off and give it a little lick, Oh, and if, and if you feel a little tingle, then it's definitely spicy. Um, if it's, if that's good for you, I would add one chili. If that's too much, you can very gently cut it open and then take out the seeds and the seeds will, uh, taking out the seeds will really, it will still be spicy, but won't be as spicy. Okay. Um, yeah. Thai green chilies, usually you only need, those are usually spicier than a serrano. So you probably okay. need half of it um if you're not in, if you're not really big into spice if you really like spice it's probably just one or two i mean if you really like spice then it's probably like three or four so you can choose your level because i know at h mart um you know we use the top of the chili trick 
It's a great. Don't, a, don't forget too. There's also chili in the Thai curry spice blend. Yes. So if you're really heat adverse, I wouldn't put any chili in. Okay. Yes. Thanks. That is also true. Their spice blend's beautifully made because it does have that spice to it. Um, the the licking the top of the chili is a risky move <laughs> because you can always risk it being too spicy, but it does give you an adequate estimate of how spicy that chili is just by touching your, the tip of your tongue to it. You can also have anyone else in the house try it too. So it doesn't have to be you. Anyways, I'm gonna give my ginger just a quick chop. It was in those tiny little match sticks and I'm just gonna chop it really quick so it's nice and fine. All about the same size as my garlic, nice and minced. Uh, I have I have a personal question. I yes. Have a bunch of um, celery that's about to go bad. Would that be good in stir fry? You think? Yeah. Um, I would slice it the same way that we cut the carrot at a diagonal, okay. so it's a little bit longer in the same width of the zucchini. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Yes, of course. So now that my rice is boiling, I'm going to turn down the heat and let it cook for. A about 18 minutes. So my rice might not be ready by the time we're ready to start cooking. That's all right, as we learn. Okay. So I have my ginger, my garlic. I'm gonna chop my chili really quick. And it can be just a small, like finely chopped, similarly to your ginger and garlic. This is gonna be cooked after we cook our protein. And this is gonna be help, also another aromatic spice and flavor that helps with the spice blend and stir fry. All right, so I think I have just about everything lined up. I have my tofu, which I chopped, is an extra firm tofu that I pressed. I'm, you, if you wanna, if you're doing tofu in the future, you could, and if with a lot of your protein, you could, you know, bread it with a little cornstarch and salt and go all into that. Um, I like to keep it a little bit cleaner. So I'm just going to fry it in a little bit of oil with the rest of our, like how we will with our protein. So I'm gonna get my wok ready. I have this very fancy electric wok. <laughs> Last time I said my knife came from my grandmother, this walk came from her, or at least I took it. I mean, she wasn't, she was not using it anymore. <laughs> and it was just up, up in like a random cupboard. And I, I asked her if I could have it and she said, okay. And it works pretty well. It actually gets quite hot. And you having an electric stove and with a walk, sometimes our traditional walk doesn't always work. So I found this electric one actually does the job. So in my walk, things are gonna go kind of quick. So if you have your vegetables chopped, then I would have them next to you. I have the chili, garlic, and ginger ready. Um, I also have my spice blend, which is for me a tablespoon or about two tablespoons if you're doing the full recipe. I have a little bit of sugar because I like to add just a contrast of sweetness. And then I have Thai basil or green onion or cilantro, any sort of green that you'd like to add onto it. The Thai basil um, is in the recipe because I just love the floral basilness of red basil and holy basil or Thai basil, whatever huh. basil. Did you say you have tips on how to cut? Um... Yes. Thank you for getting, I was in my mind and then I went, I went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so with the protein, um, I like a lot of times when I've seen stir fries and we're cutting chicken thin. So we're going to talk about a chicken breast. I'm going to use a knife as an example. So this is your chicken breast. And one way that I see a lot of people that I did um, is just cutting it straight down into thin strips. And the thing about that is, you know, you are cutting it into thin strips, but to cut it even thinner um, allows that, especially chicken breasts, we have mint. You could probably add mint. It probably wouldn't be my first herb. If you have cilantro or even par parsley may work, 
Um, I probably would stick to either cilantro, green onion, or basil. Mint could probably be, I mean, I would say try it. Why not? If you'd like. I'd probably just put it maybe on the side as well. So it's not over everything. Um, but instead of going straight, from going straight down your meat, the chicken breast, especially chicken breast, since it's not super tender, can dry out quickly and not be, it can be kind of chewy. Um, so by cutting a meat thin, um, reduces the amount of cook time. So it's not allowing the tendon to kind of tighten up and cook for super long and be tough and dry. Um, and it allows a quick cook time so you can have a quick stir fry. So with a chicken breast or even a tenderloin or a steak, you're always gonna be cutting against the grain. Um, so if you look at your piece of meat, you're going to be seeing the fibers going a certain way. Um, with chicken breast, seeing that the larger pieces over here, you'd cut it again, not at a 45 degree angle where it's sitting, my hand is a knife. It'd probably be, let's go back to math, like a 20, 25 degree angle. So you're cutting it really slow, really thinly down. I know some chicken breasts are really large. And so what I will do is instead of starting from the whole, cutting down the whole bay, like the whole front part of the breast, um, is probably cutting it down at an angle towards you. <laughs> this is going to be kind of hard to talk about. Sorry if I'm <laughs> not explaining this well. Um, if I have my chicken breast like this, we're gonna switch now. My hand is a chicken breast. I can go down this way and then I'm gonna go down the other way. So kind of, just gonna yell at me now too. Everything's a mess. Um, we're gonna go at angles, like making a V down the chicken breast, cutting it at a 20 degree angle, 20 degree angle because you want smaller pieces. You don't want a huge long piece of chicken breast. And because chicken breast is nice and long, by cutting it at an angle, you're gonna lengthen it also. So cutting it, kind of like cutting it at slices of like a V like this, um, you'll get one more meat out of your breast and uh, we'll have smaller bite-sized pieces, if that makes sense. Same thing out of like a pork, even a pork tenderloin or a steak or a flank steak that you probably cook at, always cutting it at a thin, at a very low angle acute angle, if we're gonna go back to geometry. I feel pretty proud of myself for remembering that term. <sighs> Just shows I should have been a mathematician. You know, I took really high levels of math and I regret putting myself through that. <laughs> I don't regret it. I mean, I appreciate my education, but it's not like the sine cosine of X is going to help me right now as I make a Thai green curry stir fry. And if you are a mathematician, I completely respect you and I appreciate you. <laughs> so. But the acute angle thing came in handy. It did, it did. So, hey, Kelsey, I was thinking about the fact that we're not using the whole pack of the Thai curry. And if you, you're basically gonna have a tablespoon left over. So mm -hmm. you'll probably also have some rice left over tomorrow morning. So mm -hmm. I would suggest making a um, fried rice. Ooh. That'd be a delicious rice. Leftover rice, spice blend, and some egg. And then, you know, if you have vegetables, actually, you could just probably take your Thai, mm -hmm. your, your stir fry and stir fry some of that in as well. Yeah, put an egg over it. Yeah. Done. So I'm heating up my wok. It's about, it's at a higher medium heat. I'm going to first by searing my tofu. So now we're going to start. So we talked about the, the meat. Um, I'm going to first, you're going to first start searing your protein. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil just to coat it and then move that around. The great thing about a wok, if you don't have a wok, um, you know, a large saute pan, that's, that's like a deep, um, a deep saute pan that had, that has enough of a rim that I can kind of hold the heat as you stir fry it through. Um, but a wok great because all the heat is centralized in the bottom. So you'll have to be moving it a lot along the sides to make sure you get kind of equal cooking. Um, if you're doing tofu like me, I'm gonna just set it down and give it a sear to each side. But if you're doing chicken, shrimp, beef, you're gonna toss it in the oil and start kind of tossing it through. Um, Oh, 
And I there we go. So as I'm cooking, I have my oil ready, I have my sugar, my veggies ready. And if you're tossing your protein, so once you've noticed that your chicken's kind of cooked through, your shrimp's kind of cooked through, um, you're gonna set it, you're gonna take it out of the pan and remove it, and then we'll move forward with the starchier veg or the heartier vegetables, the carrots and broccoli. But first I'm gonna make sure my tofu gets a good sear. On each side, I'm gonna turn my temperature up a little bit. Cindy is a nice, good. Oh, I thought that was a big walk. I knew I saw you till then. I was like, dang, that's a huge walk. <laughs> the walk is somewhere in the garage, which uh, is unfindable at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give my tofu a flip. So if you notice, if you're cooking in a wok, your cook time is going to go pretty quick. Usually in a saute pan, my tofu would take a little bit of a while to sear on both sides and it's already searing. So it's going to cook quick. Get it nice. Ooh, look at those crispy tofu butts. Here. Right. Here, let that sear. It's going to come off in about a minute or two, and then we're going to start searing our vegetables. How are we doing? I bet people's rice might be getting ready, maybe in a couple minutes or so. Um, when your rice is done, I'm just going to say this now because probably once we're stir frying, your rice might be ready. You're going to remove, well, first you're going to take off the lid, check it. Like you can make sure it's fully cooked. You can take a little spoonful of it. Um, but what you will do is you're going to lift the lid and put a cot, either a cotton towel um, or a paper towel underneath the lid and put the lid back on and remove it from the heat and let's set it aside until we're ready to eat. So it's the paper towel is really to take the rest of that steam so that our rice doesn't get too soggy, but a lot holds it so that the temperature can kind of keep letting the rice fluff up and cook a little bit longer. So I can hear my tofu. It is done. I'm going to remove it. You know, a thing about cooking is you have to listen. A lot of the times, like when I am in the gyoza, when you know, when we're cooking gyoza on the weekends, um, things are a lot of things are moving. Um, people are talking, but one way that I really have to make keep, to make sure that my the gyoza are being cooked is by listening to the sizzle. And you'll notice by the sizzle <laughs> of a lot of things is noticing when um, things are ready to be taken off of the pan, or you know that the water has evaporated. So what I heard is I stopped hearing a lot of sizzling, meaning that I heard that my tofu, the water that it's on, the side that it's on is now gone and it's getting crisp because it's not creating that really crispy, like <sighs> meaning that I could hear the water content has gone down me, it's getting nice and crisp on that side. It is just ready to come out of the pan. So it's ready to come out of the pan. I'm going to set my tofu aside right here because we're going to use it pretty quickly. I'm going to turn my wok to about medium high. I'm going to add a little bit more oil. And right now, this is where it's going to get a little bit quick. Let me turn it down really quick. We're going to add our chili, garlic, and ginger. Stir fry that just in the oil for about 30 seconds, because remember our wok is hot or your pan is hot. And then we're gonna add our spice blend. Only again, gonna stir fry it for about 20 seconds because those spice that spice is ground and it's a lot easier for those spices to burn. And once we add that, we're going to add, oh, ha, huh, 
I almost caught myself because right now we're going to cook the hard vegetables, which are the broccoli and carrot. Just really quick. And then we're going to go into the spice blend. I'm sorry, everyone. I got a little, I got excited. We're just going to toss some broccoli and cauliflower in the pan. Just to give it a cooking head start. Um, since they do have a lot more fiber in them, they need a little bit more cook time. Onion and bell pepper can stay, can wait though. Yeah, the bell pepper, zucchini, and onion is going to wait. But I'm going to put it in my hot pan and give that just a quick stir fry. Cook it for about two minutes or so. I really just want to get a good sear on it. And then as we add in the rest of the vegetables, the water from those vegetables, and the little bit of broth or water that we're gonna add at the end, it will then finish off the vegetable, all the vegetables together. So they're steamed and fried and ready to eat. You give, oh no. <laughs> you give that a quick pot. You could even, if you made shallot oil, you could give this a good drizzle over your stir fry when you're done. Use a quick toss. As that cooks, again, what I was saying, what I thought we were jumping to um, is after this, as I said, we'll do the ginger, garlic, and chili. Then we'll add in our carrot or spice blend, and then our bell pepper, onion, zucchini, onion, vegetables that have not been cooked yet. Then adding in the rest of the vegetables that have been cooked, tossing it through, creating a quick stir fry, um, and then we're done and ready to eat. All right, I can again hear and smell. I'm smelling some caramelization on my vegetables. So let me give that a toss. I can see that they're starting to get nice and green and toasted. So I think I'm just gonna cook it for about a minute more. Um, and set it aside. I have my tofu set aside, so now I'm just going to re put that right here. I have these vegetables, part of me blocking. Okay. Again, adding a touch of oil, about a tablespoon or so. I'm going to add my ginger garlic chili, tossing that through. So now, now this is my favorite part because this is when everything's just gonna smell delicious. <laughs> when all the aromatics come out. Another way you can find out if your chili is spicy is when you start cooking it and you can smell the chili. <laughs> and you start coughing, then it's probably pretty hot. So I can already, my garlic and ginger are starting to brown. So now I'm gonna add the green, curry spice blend to give that just a quick top through. It really is 10, 20 seconds. I'm just wanting it to coat. I'm going to add a tiny bit of more oil, just about another tablespoon. I'm going to add now my onion, pepper, and zucchini. I don't know how that got in there. Give that a top through. Make sure my pan is about at a medium heat. We're, I'm gonna let this toss about, only about a minute or so. Um, and then I'm gonna re-add the carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower. And then I'm gonna add about a fourth cup of water or chicken broth or vegetable broth. Um, this just helps the vegetable steam and cook a little bit more. But, and then also because the green curry is, it's very forward and strong in its flavor. And so adding a little bit of water um, just to kind of tone it down a little bit so that it's a good balanced flavor rather than like punching you, you in the face curry. Um, so we're gonna, just, again, I hear it. I hear it talking to me, it's kind of sizzling away. I'm gonna keep on stirring it because I don't want it to burn. 
And I'm gonna add the rest of my vegetables. Give that a good toss. Make sure everything is coated in that ginger, chili, garlic. Oh, I mean, I can smell it. I'm not gonna add, if you have any other protein but tofu, <coughs> you're gonna add it in about a minute. Um, I'm not adding my tofu just yet because it's really soft. And so mixing it through can kind of break it up and crumble it. And I don't want that to sit. But I can smell my vegetables. I can start to see my onion has softened. But right now to that, I can hear the crop. <laughs> I'm going to add a my broth. And then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of sugar. Which is about a pinch and I like to add sugar again just to balance it out. I'm going to toss it through. And now is when I'm going to add my tofu. If you're making tofu like me. And I'm going to give it just a soft toss. I also heard my rice go off. So I'm going to check my rice. I'm going to take it off the heat. Mm. Oh, that's going to be yummy. I'm going to put a paper towel underneath it and hold it. All right, this is just about ready. I want to keep on cooking it until I start to hear the water um, evaporate fully. So I want to get back to that kind of crispy stir fryness. But until then, I'm going to get my greens ready. So either my green onions, my Thai basil, my cilantro, any greens. You could add spinach if you'd like, which reminds me I have some spinach that I'm going to very casually open and add. <laughs> But I can hear the, the sauce almost evaporate fully. I'm going to give my broccoli a little taste. Mm. All right, that's done. I'm going to add my spinach and my basil and a little bit of green onion. I'm going to use that a quick toss. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to turn that off. Mine is done. I'm going to get my serving bowl. All right. I just want to clean up a little bit. I'm going to get right in my rice paddle. All right. I'm going to plate really quick. While you're plating, should we chop or tear the Thai basil? Yes. What was that? Uh, should we chop or tear the Thai basil? Um, I would just tear it and rip it and sprinkle it in your hands and then pour it over. All right, I'm gonna get some rice. Ooh, such fluffy coconut rice. I can smell the coconut. I'm gonna add some of my stir fry. Make sure you get all those good veggies and crisp tofu or whatever protein you chose. And then I, in the recipe, if you'd like, you can sprinkle a little bit of dried coconut on your coconut rice. You can give a little bit of sprinkle of sesame seeds. 
some Thai basil or a little bit of green onion. And then of course, if you made, hold on everyone, crispy shallots, <laughs> then we're gonna, I'm gonna make a little pile of those. And then, your like coconut flakes and sesame seeds on the rice or over top of everything? I put it over top of everything because it's delicious and why not? <laughs> <laughs> you can just put it on top of the coconut rice, um, but adding a little bit on top is also pretty probably yummy too. And then we have our Thai green curry stir fry with some coconut rice and crispy shallots. <laughs> I'm excited to see all of yours. How's everyone feeling? How close are we to, to plating? As usual, I did not follow instructions well, so I'm a little bit behind. I'm also That's all right. <laughs> You know, I bet, you know, if you'd like to play around um, with this, you know, creating a stir fry, you could probably do this stir fry uh, with the tikka masala and uh, making it with like a basmati rice or having it with like a salad, like a, some roasted vegetables. Um, and these, as I said, these crispy shallots could go on top of, let's see, what else could they go on top of? They could go on top of everything. Sandwich, omelet, burrito, crispy meat, fancy taco. <laughs> There's lots of options. <laughs> um, I have a question. Yes. That is more about using the spice in general. Ooh, I, ice cream. Ooh, you know, I may not try shallots on ice cream. You know, actually, well, sweet and savory. Sweet and savory. I do like sweet and savory. And I'm, I feel like at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, they probably make a gil or like a garlic ice cream. Yeah. And so they do. I'm not like fully against a fried, a crispy shallot ice cream. <laughs> it could work depending on the ice cream. Maybe like, you know, because I do make like a cheese ice cream, like queso, like a I know in, in Mexico they make a cheese ice cream, so I bet I see I'm gonna make it work a cheese ice cream with crispy shallots on top. And if that doesn't work, then that's fine. <laughs> Always an idea. I'll come to that cooking class. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to welcome our um our kid guests today. Yeah. Um Gianna is not with us today though, Bobby. She took an important film call, apparently. Oh, I see. <laughs> and then we have, uh-oh, she has disappeared. Oh, <laughs> Adeline is there. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. She's actually um, one of our Japanese curry fan base. Oh. Yes, <laughs> that is a staple, like a weekly <laughs> staple in our house. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. Hey, I loved it. It's always fun being in the kitchen and fun to be with your mom too, probably. A lot of my cooking memories are with my mom in the kitchen and how I started. So I bet if I, I bet if I was your age and we would have had technology like this, I would have been all over cooking classes. <laughs> I think, was it, I don't know. My, as a child, I would watch, my top two channels were the cooking channel and food network. And uh, they taught me a lot, <laughs> but a lot of, uh, if you remember like old school Food Network, a lot of it, I know last time we talked, it was like Rachel Ray. Um, she had this $40 a day show. Um, and then there was the like original Iron Chef, um, lots of different things <laughs> that were uh, influencing my childhood right now. <laughs> okay, we did it. Let's see. Let me see. I gotta get back to my own view so I can see. Oh, beautiful. I don't want to tilt it like too much. No, yeah. <laughs> it's colorful and I'm very excited. It smells amazing. Great. 
Well, I'm so glad that everyone's had a little. And if you are, you know, are, if you have made your meal and you want to go eat and take that time, please do. You have, you've worked hard. You've worked for it. And <laughs> um, I, I just appreciate uh, for you all coming and joining us on these cooking classes. They've been really fun. They're like the highlight of my week when I'm able to do them. So I appreciate you all. So along. Don't leave, though, before you've showed us your your. Um... Your dish, your finished dish. Oh, she did. We have, we have to do the group shot. Yeah. So if you guys are ready, we can go ahead and do it. But whoever's not ready, we can wait for. Oh, I'm so fun. Yeah, hopefully I'm ready. Um, even though I wasn't cooking. You can always make them. I mean, we watch cooking shows all the time. And we never make it with them. So it's all right if you don't make it. <laughs> make it inspiration for next time. Ooh, look at that fancy sliced. Is that chicken or tofu? Mine? No, um, Elliot and Jessica. It's uh, tofu. Jessica. Ooh, Looks very great. Like little steaks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pam, let's see. I love your bowl. Yeah, that's a cool bowl. It was my grandmother's. <laughs> oh, nice. I did tofu. Oh, too. Come here, you missed her. Okay. All right. Are we ready? <laughs> All right. I can never get my face in there. Jonna's back. <laughs> Hi, Jonna. All right. Plates up in one. <laughs> Technical difficulties. There we go. One. I can get my face in there. <laughs> I want to do it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, we're going to face. I could never figure it out. <laughs> well, this is the last of our cooking classes. I think we'll be sending out some sort of survey to get your feedback, but I think we we're probably unless by hugely popular demand, we'll be back next winter um, with another series. Yes. So, but I think, um, let's see, what, what is it? we'll have the recordings available for all four classes. That's like awesome. um, in case you wanna cook again. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. We've had a really fun time. Yes, uh, thank you everyone. Thank you guys so much. And if you miss the class, can you go back and purchase it to get the recording or? I think we'll just, I think we're just gonna, anybody who took a class, we'll just make the recordings available to everybody who took a class. Mm -hmm. So that way you catch up. Cause I know Elliot and Jessica, you guys missed a class or two. So yeah. And eventually we might share the recipe but you don't get the experience of cooking with Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah with the broader public true mm -hmm. right but I, I mean I uh, what I appreciate about these classes is that I'm learning a lot about like knife skills how to test a, the heat of a chili like there's some really great other information that's not in a recipe so thank you Kelsey yeah anytime thank you all this has been a lot of fun love cooking with people and love enjoying it um with people as well so I'm so glad you guys like these um they're a joy in my week. So thank you again. And hopefully, um, I know we'll probably be doing with Masi Masa another round in the winter. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I might have a couple more cooking classes, who knows, throughout the summer or springtime. I'm still figuring that out, but stay tuned. We'll send a link in the follow-up email so yes. you can follow Kelsey. And if you're in the area up and happen to be up there this summer, especially go look for her at the farmer's markets. Um, mm -hmm in the Portland area with her gyoza. Yeah, and probably a growing menu. Oh, great. Yeah, try not to get carpal tunnel anymore. <laughs> I think I need to stop holding a lot of things. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Kian. Bye, Kian. <laughs>